I'm going to tell you six things that you need to know in order to save seeds. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And saving seeds is not only fun, but it's fulfilling. It's connecting you to the earth, connecting you to the history of humanity, the humans who have been saving these seeds for generations, for millennia. It's just putting you back to what humans have always done. And it brings us back to the beginning. There are six things we're going to look at. And we're going to start off with one of the things that you need to know in order to save seeds is you need to know it's the seed species or the plant species. You say, what? Who cares about the Latin names, right? Well, largely, I don't really care much because I don't speak Latin. So it really doesn't interest me all that much. But there's a reason for these species names that are important to the seed saver. And, and what is that? Now, if you have two different varieties of the same species in, a, in close proximity, something can happen. They can cross pollinate and the seeds that you save could be a different variety, a third kind of variety in the end. And for a few years, you may not have stability in what kind comes out. So it makes kind of a, they're not true to type anymore. When I say true to type, that means if you plant a black bean, you're gonna get a black bean. But if you plant a black bean, six inches away from a pinto bean, they may cross pollinate and you may get a blinto bean or, you know, a black into bean. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but you get the point. They, they can end up crossing. So knowing the species, you then have to find out, well, how far do I have to keep them apart? We're going to get to that. That's another one of, the, of our six points that you need to know for saving seeds. Now, I'll give you an example, though. So for uh, there's a certain species like this plant right here, which is these are broccoli seeds. There's the species is they're called the Brassicas oleracea. So in the species Brassica oleracea, you you have not only broccoli, but you have you have Brussels sprouts, you have cabbage, you have kale, you have collards, you have kohlrabi, all of these different things. And if you plant them ne near each other and you're actually allowing them to flower at the same time, they can also cross pollinate. These plants, though they don't look alike, they're the same species. So knowing that when you are saving seeds for the different brassicas, you only allow one of them, one of the varieties to go to flower at the same time so they don't cross pollinate. Now, there are certain things like carrots and parsnips. You look at them and you're like, man, they look almost identical. I mean, that root looks almost identical. One's maybe a little lighter than the other, although I know carrots can be also the similar color, but they're actually totally different species. So you can grow them right next to each other and they will not cross pollinate. So number one, you need to know the species that is important in saving your seeds. Number two, you need to know the separation distance or the, the distance to separate each species from each other. Now, just to give you an idea, a common thing, like I already mentioned, the, the black bean and the pinto, to keep them separate in general, you generally only need to keep the same species of beans roughly 12 feet apart. Obviously 20, 30, 40, 50 would be better, but roughly 12 feet is gonna be far enough for a bean. So even a person with a small yard could actually grow different varieties of, of common beans and still be able to, to not cross pollinate. But then you look at some of the other things like tomatoes. Tomatoes might be 30 to 50 feet. So uh, two different varieties, you could have your Roma tomato, and then you could have your Vernissage to tomato, and you want to 30 to 50 feet apart, that you should be able to keep them true to type so that you'll still get next year the, the types that you're trying to keep, you know, instead of cross-pollinating them. Uh, but then you come onto something like watermelon. Watermelon really needs to be more like a half mile apart. And then you get to things like spinach, and you're talking like five miles. So um, most of us don't have any, unless you live in like the tundra of Alaska, um, you're probably, it's gonna be hard to not cross pollinate something like the spinach. So knowing the distance is, in, is important, but hey, uh, even if you're in a situation where you're relatively close to somebody else and they're growing something, you can still give it a try. You can still see what happens. If in, if in time you start getting strange plants, well, you, you kind of know what happened then if you were too close to your neighbors. But if you, you, know, have, if you have acreage, it's much easier to do. No, number three, uh, you need to find out, is this plant that I'm trying to save seed from an annual or a biennial? What do you mean? Well, an annual is something like this. This broccoli is what's called an annual. That means in, in the first year you plant it, if you let it go to flower, you can get seed the very first year. But most of the rest of the brassicas, kale, cabbage, and cauliflower, and these kind of things, in general, most of them are what are called biennial, meaning you plant them this year and you wait all year and you're like, 
I didn't get any seed. I can't believe it. I got no seed from these plants. It's because they don't give you seed the first year. They give you seed the second year. And so um, there's a whole process of doing that. And I'll do videos on biennials, on kale, and these different kinds of things on how to save seed from your kale. But knowing the, knowing the distinction will help you to know and help you realize, wow, I didn't, why didn't I get any seed from my kale? Because it doesn't give it this year. Number four, the length of season for the seed that you're trying to save. Now, if you live in an area that is too far north and you have a 90 day summer, there's still many things that you can grow. That's a very short summer, but you can still grow many different things in that area. But you can't grow something that'll take 130 days most things anyway uh, because like if you're trying to grow a long summer amaranth in your area with a 90-day summer it's probably not going to work out because you're not it's not actually going to get to seed uh, but there are certain things like parsnips that may take 150 days you could grow in your cold area because it doesn't need that particular plant doesn't need 150 frost free days it's very hardy it can actually go right into the winter and through the winter because it's also a biennial so knowing the difference uh, will help you figure that one out. But also, like we said, knowing the season, the length of the season is important. And you can look online, you can look, uh, you know, frost free days. If you Google that, type in your zip code into a website, they will tell you how many frost day free days you generally have. And then you can pick varieties from the catalogs or from the websites that you buy your seeds from. And so that you'll buy ones that actually fit your climate of your region or even maybe your microclimate depending on where you live so that's number four now number five is the number of plants necessary to maintain the genetics what do i mean so if you end up having uh let's say for instance just because i'm in front of the broccoli right now if you only saved from this one particular plant and i have plants around it but imagine i only say there's enough seeds on this probably for a few years on this one plant for me and if I only save the seed from that one, I will end up having what's called a genetic bottleneck or genetic entropy or genetic atrophy where I, I'm losing genetic material because, because each plant, though it's in the same variety, it's actually it's the exact same species. It's, it's, what can happen is if I only save from one, in time, it will actually it, it will cause trouble and it will, it will stunt the vigor of this plant. So you actually want to save from multiple of the same uh, species of the same variety that you're actually growing. So it's good to know how many you need to grow. So for instance, common beans, you may only need to save five to 10 plants. You know, 20 would be better for if you're really trying to save all the genetic material, that would be important there. Now, but here's the thing, something like corn you actually need to save a minimum of 50. 100 is better and 200 would actually be really recommended. Corn is something that I don't know any other species of plant that needs as great a diversity as corn. Corn really begins to atrophy. You don't wanna save from like five, 10, 15 plants. 50 is minimum, you, but 100 is better and 200 is really even better. But most plants, like for instance, you look at squash five to 10 plants. Squash are super easy to save because you, you eat the squash and scoop out the seeds, dry those seeds out, boom, you got your squash seeds. All you need is five to 10 plants. Now, 25 would be even better, but for a home garden, five to 10 is gonna, it, you're gonna keep your variety going at home. And tomatoes, five to 10, 20 plus is even better. So you get the idea. Now, now if, if uh, you don't have a chart, you can look it up, Seed Savers Exchange. They actually have a, a whole chart that'll show you how many for kind of home preservation, if you're just looking to save seeds for home, or if you're an actual grower, how many you want to grow. Number six, you need your seed in the end to be very dry, because if not, you can take the vitality of that plant away by leaving too much water in it. And you especially don't want to freeze a seed that has too much water in it. Now, those are six things that you need to know. Six things that you need to know in order to save your own seeds. Now, I haven't told you exactly how to save seeds from a tomato or from, you know, <clears throat> broccoli. Some of these are very simple, some are more complex, but the reality is there's many videos I'll be doing on these various different subjects. You can check us out. If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, God bless and have a wonderful day.